Alright, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today we're going to start with a new topic, which is uh, chapter number one, introduction to statistics. So statistics represent a scientific uh, procedure and method uh, for collecting, organizing, summarizing, and presenting the data. So basically, the definition of statistics consists of five elements, right? First is how information is being collected, and once you already collect the data, right, collect the information, right, and we need to organize the information or data, and then we're going to uh, analyze the data, right, analyze the data, present the data, or interpret the data in a meaningful manner, and, uh, sorry, interpret the data and present the data. So we have five elements, so kalau kita boleh make it short, First is collect, how information is being collected, how information is being organized, and then we are going to analyze the data, and after analyze the data, we are going to interpret the, data, the result, and we are going to present the result. So, this is a five element for definition of statistics, right, so we have uh, again, uh, the definition of statistic is how information is being collected. So, information known as data, right? Data is being collected, organized, and how uh, data is being uh, analyzed, interpret, and present, right? So, this is the definition of statistics. So, kita tengok dekat sini, uh, benda yang sama lah. Cuma, uh, the the box uh, number three ni, right? It should be on the last box lah. This batunya dekat bawah sekali, right? So selepas interpret baru kita present, right? First, how we going to collect the data? Either primary data or secondary data. We need to choose, right? So uh, once you already collect the data, so we need to organize the data in readable and understandable form, right? So means that we're going to put in a structural format lah, right? So in database, kan? dalam Excel, right? And then we're going to analyze the data uh, according to our objective. Right? Let's say you want to compare a mean of two groups. So, so you're going to use independent sample t-test, right? So that's a part of analysis. Then once you already have the result of the analysis, you're going to interpret the result. Right, so we need to give in meaningful for information of the data gathered, right, uh, to assist in making more effective decision lah. And then once you have, when you have a result and you already interpret the result, then you need to in present the result in useful and meaningful way, right. So such as you are going to use a uh, bar bar plot ka, monogram ka, right, scatter diagram ka. Right, so it's up to you. It's up to uh, which plot suitable to the result, right? So uh, statistics is refers to uh, numerical information, right? Numerical information. So for example, if you want to find the average starting salary, uh, so this is the the statistics that we want to find. So basically. This is a, what we call as statistic without S. It's a numerical uh, summary. So, kalau statistic without S is referred to numerical summary. Kalau statistic with S is uh, consists of the element of collect, organize, in, analyze, interpret, and present. But what, what statistic without S is refers to numerical summary lah. So, numerical summary such as mean, mode, median, and so on lah. Right? The percentage of unmarried uh, women in Klang Valley is 30%. So, this is, uh, the percentage is our statistic. Right? Without S. So, now, let's look at the basic terminologies. Right? Before we go further in this uh, chapter or top uh, syllabus, let's look at the uh, term variable variable means that so 
usually kalau kita nak um, buat uh, statistics right in statistics subject usually kita buat survey for example kan ataupun we we collect a data uh, we from a secondary uh, source right so uh, when we have a we have collected the data we then we have a data set so in a data set it consists of two element right dalam that satu data set structured data set ah huh? i'm talking about structured data set which can input into a, a structured database right so means that we have column and row so we have column and row in a structured data set we have column and we have row right normally in column we put variable we uh, is state as variable uh, in row it says as uh, data lah. for example we have uh, gender gender male female male female let's say we have age uh, 27 37 47 57 and so on lah so now tengok dekat sini the the word gender the word age and so on is called as variable right the value inside the variable means in each row right male female 27 37 47 and so on we call as data so variable is a characteristic or attribute of interest in the population of uh, or sample so means that gender marital status the anything that we are interested to study we call as variable right so data is the value obtain uh, from the management uh, measurement or observation for that variable for example age 27 37 47 right so it value young accommodate for the variable of age so that is uh, we call as data okay <coughs> and then uh, we have a population right the term population population consists of all subject that are being studied for example, let's say you want to study a, a knowledge, a knowledge, attitude, and practice of dengue fever prevention in Perak Tengah District. So this is your your objective. You want to find, uh, you want to know, you want to measure the knowledge, attitude, and practice of dengue fever prevention. So you want to know uh, what is the knowledge of dengue fever prevention in resident in Perak Tengah District. You want to know what is the attitude of the resident towards the dengue fever prevention. What is the practice of the residents in uh, for dengue fever prevention? at Perak Tengah Districts. So, the population is, we call as all people, all subject. So, the keyword is all subject, either humans, object, or anything that being studied. Means that the area you want to study here is Perak Tengah District. Eh? For example, you can see example ni, eh? Perak Tengah District is the area. So, the the object or the unit being studied is all the human or the residents stay under in at Perak Tengah District lah at Perak Tengah District so it means that all residents at Perak Tengah Districts is your population right all residents in Perak Tengah District at, is your population for another example let's say you want to study uh, for example um uh, you want to study um let's say um satisfaction on uh, towards uh, satisfaction of towards uh, apa nama uh, cafe at UITM Perak UITM Tapa right so among students so example kan so the keyword here is you want to study uh, satisfaction uh on towards cafe at cafe provider right uh, among student at UITM 
tapa. Uh, this is the keyword kan. So who going to be involved in your in this uh, keywords? Of course, students at UITM tapa kan. So population is all students at UITM tapa. Right. So I just want to uh, tell you the definition of population lah. So another term is sample. Sample is subset of population. For example, let's say you have a population. Right? The whole circle, the big circle here is your population, all member in the subject area. And let's say uh, students, all students in UITM, TAPA. Right? So for example, capital N equal to 5,000. So we have 5,000 students in UITM TAPA. So sample means that you take a subset of a population right, to, to, to become your study unit or sampling unit. So your sample is a subset of total population, sum or portion of a total population. So that is your uh, sum, sample. Right? So sample can be uh, taken either randomly or non-randomly, right? So, randomly, kita boleh ambil mana-mana suka hati. Let's say, this one, this one, this one to become your sample, right? So, randomly. Or non-randomly, you can ambil satu tempat saja, non-randomly. And sample can be taken many, uh, you can take many sample lah. This is, let's say, this is uh, one sample number one. Let's say, you ambil satu lagi, sample number two, right? For example, kan? So, now, the notation that we use for sample is let's say n equal to capital n equal to 5000 capital n will refers to the total number of member or element in the population right so the total member in the population capital n so sample is small letter n let's say you have ambil 40 right so N equal small letter N is refers to all members in selected sample. Right, all members in a selected sample. Boleh faham ah? This is very uh, simple uh, term that you need to uh, understand. And then um, there is another term we call as statistic. Right, statistic. Tadi ada bagi kita tadi. What is the definition of statistics? Another term is a definition of parameter. So this is another two term uh, uh, for measure of numerical summary. So statistic is a measure of numerical summary uh, calculated from sample. Statistics is a measure of um, uh, numerical summary calculated from sample. Right, calculated from sample, where the parameter is a measure of numerical summary calculated from the population. Boleh faham? Eh? Statistic, I will ask sekali lagi. Statistic is a measure of numerical summary calculated from sample, where the parameter is a measure of numerical summary calculated from population. So, numerical summary can be either mean, mode, median, standard deviation, right, uh, percentage, and so on. Lah. Whatever calculated value, numerical measure, so from a sample, so is is a statistic. So, let's say kita tengok dia punya definition, mean, right, this is a statistic. And let's say kita tengok sebelah ni. And kita letak satu lagi. This is parameter. Right. So let's say we want to calculate mean for statistics. We, the symbol is X bar. For parameter, the symbol is mu. Standard deviation. The symbol is S for statistics. For parameter is sigma. For variance, symbol is S squared, sigma squared. So this is a total sample 
Um, the, the symbol for uh, statistic is small letter n. The parameter is capital letter n, right? Right. So this is a symbol used for uh, to differentiate uh, mean standard deviation. For parameter and statistics, right? Now another uh, for, uh, term that you need to know is census, right? So when we have a lot of topics, kan? Uh, so uh, term term ni you need to understand. So if you fail to understand this term, then uh, it's hard for you to continue for the next topic, right? So another term is census. Census is a uh, in uh, ni kita kita kata banci lah. Ha, banci is a study that carry out using the whole population. So this is what we call as census. We take whole population and we measure for the whole population. So this is what we call as uh, census lah. And sample survey, right? Um, another term. This is a related ah. Eh? Census and sample survey, statistics and parameter. Sample survey is a, a survey done uh, that involve a subgroup of the population. Means that we take from sample, kan? Sample, nama apa sample, kan? We take, we take, we do a, sem, a survey from sample population, right? And pilot study. It's not a study about aircraft, right? It's not a study about aircraft. It's a study done before the actual field work is carried out. Means that, uh, let's say, you're, uh, you, uh, by default, you, are, you already uh, form a group and discuss about your topic, right? So, when you want to do a survey work, right? You want to do a survey, right? Uh, there is many options, right? Either you are using ready-made uh, question questionnaire, right? You are a uh, ready-made questionnaire, and then you uh, copy and adapt into your research, uh, research uh, study work, uh, your project, or you develop a new uh, questionnaire. You develop a new questionnaire for your research project. So when you develop a new research project, or you adapt. Uh, previous questionnaire into your project, you need to test whether the questionnaire will work well in your study area. Faham tak? Uh, you need to test whether your questionnaire is work well in your study area. So, you need to distribute to non-sample or non-interest study area you lah. Right? Uh, maksudnya, uh, dalam population yang sama atau population yang lain, Right, tapi subject area, uh, sorry, the, the characteristic of the respondent uh, same as yours. So, you try to take a sample, berapa lagi sikit lah, means uh, 10 ataupun 30 uh, sample, sample size. Right, and then you distribute and you measure balik, you tengok balik response dia, you tengok balik reliability of the questions, right, whether can be trusted or cannot be trusted, or you need to, to change some uh, question in the questionnaire, right? So, it call as a pilot study lah, right? So, you need to remember kalau you ada buat questionnaire, right? you adapt the questionnaire from previous uh, studies or you develop your own questionnaire, you need to do a pilot study first. You need to measure, you need to test whether your questionnaire is, uh, will work well or not work well in your study area, right? So sample sampling frame sampling frame is uh, this is most important part. So sampling frame frame is a list of all members, list of all members in the population. So let's say you have um, population here. So population capital N is equal to five. Thousand, right? So you have a very big population. Let's say it's, uh, population. You are student. All students in UITM Tapa five thousand, right? So you want to take a sample, right? Of 
let's say sample of n equal to 100 out, out of 5000 we want to take 1 until 100 right from the population right so to get the list of population so kalau you uh, nak ambil sample ni you need to have a list of members in the population so then you can select uh, a member the population ni randomly uh, you can call the names you have mesti ada nama dia and mesti ada id phone number all the information lah uh, and then that and that that can uh, make you uh, call the Pop, uh, uh, sample uh, population members tu lah ok so list of uh, all members ni right so consists of their information kan so this is what we call as sampling frame right so sampling frame of course dia akan ada sampai 5000 lah right so it is prepared so that sample can be selected randomly from the population. So you can, uh, let's say you ambil dekat sini, ni, ini yang first ni, dia tak ada list of uh, members kan, dia, mungkin dia tulis nama saja kan. So nombor satu nama Ali. So you, you nak contact Ali ni macam mana? You mesti ada phone number dia, student ID dia, right? So you can contact to include into your sample, uh, sample unit. Right, so this is what uh, example of uh, sampling frame. Right, a list of company registered in Busram, uh, Busram Malaysia, list of student names in class, list of names and address in subscriber of uh, telephone directory. So uh, that is uh, the term for sampling frame. Right? Right. Now let's look at uh, descriptive and influential of statistics. So this is uh, lies under type of statistics. So statistics can be divided into two types, right? Either uh, inferential statistics and another one is descriptive statistics. So descriptive statistics tends to uh, describe the data only, right? We want to describe what is the mean of the uh, population, what is the standard deviation of the sample, right? So we, we just want to describe the data, right? Uh, inferential statistics, we want to make a conclusion towards the population, Right. From a sample, we want to make a conclusion to the population, to the whole population. For example, let's say we want to know, is there any difference between two groups? Let's say group A and group B. Right. So, in terms of the performance of the uh, test. Right? Uh, so, ada perbezaan tak? Method of teaching sama. So, nak tengok, student ni perform. Student A perform well ke? Student B should perform well. So, we want to make a inference right so that is a call under inferential statistics so descriptive statistics data are compiled organized and summarized and presented in suitable visual form which are easy to understand right so tables graph chart are used to present information obtained from the data set lah. so descriptive statistics are very important uh, because we are, uh, if you are simply present our raw data, you will be hard to visualize uh, the data was showing lah. You boleh baca dekat sini kan. So basically, descriptive statistics is help us to screen the data. Whether the data is having a missing value ka, data having a outlier ka, uh, data is a normally distributed or not normally distributed. It help us to decide which uh, statistical method to be uh, to be used later on right so let's say you want your objective is you want to know uh, whether there is a mean a mean different between group a and group b you want to know is there any difference between group a and group b so to decide which method to use either independent sample t test or man winning test eh? So, man, uh, independent sample t-test is a parametric test. It requires a normal distribution test and normal distributed data, right? Where the man winning test is a non-parametric test. It's a distribution free, right? It's a non-parametric test. So, by using a descriptive data, you can visualize the data to, to see whether the data is normally distributed or skewed distribution, 
right? So it help us to decide which one, which method to be employed later on. And it's also uh, tell us the general uh, side about the data. Right now, then look at example. If we had a mathematical a mathematics mark of 500 students in the college, we may interest in the overall performance of those students. We will also interest in the distribution of or spread of the marks. Ah, right? Overall performance means we want to know the mean, standard deviation, right? Uh, this one lies under uh, standard, uh, descriptive statistics. So now, for influential statistics, it, we make a generalization about the population by analyzing the sample. And if the, if the sample is good representation of the population, the accurate calculation about the population can be inferred. Lah. So that's why, to get a good representation of the population, we need to employ a random sampling techniques. Right. If you are employing a non-random sampling techniques, then uh, the question about the representative of the population is can be query lah. Right. So now the procedure is select to select a sample from population, measure the variable of interest, analyze the data, interpret the output, and draw the conclusion based on the analysis. So for example, like see here. We might interest in the mathematics marks of all students in the college. It's not practical to measure all mathematics marks of all students in the college. So we, we might take a smaller sample right, of the student. For example, 100 students out, out of uh, 5,000. Right? So which are represented uh, the larger population of all students. Right? So the properties of samples such as mean of standard A deviation uh this is not we call as a parameter we call as a statistic eh? without s nanti eh? dapat buku kena kena uh, padam s belakang ni eh? so later on on the uh, influential statistics kita akan belajar dalam chapter number 3 and chapter number 4 which is uh, estimation and hypothesis testing right in detail right so this one can be used in your uh FYP nanti on lah. Huh? Next semester, you akan belajar FYP. Okay. So, now. Tadi kita tengok type of uh, uh, statistics. Now, look at type of data. So, in statistics, we have two type of data. Either uh, primary data or secondary data. Right. So, sementara tunggu you punya buku sampai kan. Uh, you can go to the library and borrow some books lah huh, in statistics you baca dulu at least you have uh, some material to read kan uh, jangan duduk saja tak baca buku ah pergi bu uh, library pi pinjam buku apa apa buku statistics fundamental of statistics introduction of statistics just you want to read the first chapter what is the first chapter introduction to statistics the the type of the, uh, statistics type of data you are, you need to understand uh, the source of data and and then uh, uh, level of measurement, right? Semua benda-benda tu kena baca, kena faham. Right, uh, primary data and secondary data. Primary data uh, is the data that we collect at our first hand, right? Or we collect by ourselves lah. Right? We are the first person who get the data. This is what we call as primary data lah. We are the first person. Uh, we are not the second person. If you are the second person to get the data, or this is what we call as secondary data lah. Means that the data is already collected by other people, right? And we already publish uh, somewhere else. Uh, some contoh, for example, they publish in the database, in the website, in the journal, newspaper, internet, and so on lah. Right? So we are the the second people who know the data, who get the data, right? So this is what we call as secondary data lah. So advantage and disadvantage of secondary data. Uh, later on, you can read by yourself, right? Primary data more accurate lah, huh? more accurate and consistent with the objective of the research, right? So normally we collect the data that re that uh, require by our research objective, right? So other than that, kita can ignore, right? So when you use a primary secondary data, so normally data tak semua data uh, uh, related to our objective, right? 
it's not all data related to our objective and this advantage of uh, primary data when you do we want to do a collect uh, data collection you need to prepare uh, mentally uh, uh, prepare mentally lah untuk berhadapan dengan orang kan untuk tanya soalan and we need to have time manpower right if you have require a lot of uh, data you need to hire somebody to collect the data lah if you want to do by yourself then it will take a longer time right and and of course when you hire a, a manpower then it will cost a, a money to to pay lah to collect the data right uh, then later on you play screenshot or you play a bunch of later on and uh, my advice is you go to the library and borrow some books about the introduction of statistics and baca right Make sure you have you have the habit to baca kan. Jangan duduk you at university tak baca buku kan. Uh, mengharapkan lectures note uh, that's uh, menyalahi uh, sifat sebagai student kan. Uh, you can ada baca lah. Kalau selalu membaca. Right. Now type of variable. Tadi kita tengok type of statistics, type of data, and now we look at the type of variable. So we understand variable is something that we are interested to study. Right, for example, gender, age, um, let's say CGPA, right, names, address, right. So all of that we call as variable, right. So uh, variable can be divided into two types. First is quantitative variable. Another one is qualitative variable. Let me put this way. So. Kalau you rajin baca, you pergi ke library baca dan you akan dapat uh, understand uh, this topic very well. Because this topic is very fundamental. If you fail to understand, then it's hard you, to you to move on to the next topic. Right? Susah nak faham next topic. So, now, variable, let's say... Uh, Variable can we divide into two types? Right, first is qualitative, and then another one is quantitative. Right, so they have two type of variable: qualitative and quantitative. Under qualitative is a categorical. Uh, variable categorical variable it takes categorical data right it takes categorical data for example gender right gender let's say uh, ethnicity ethnicity lagi ada apa yang categorical variable colors right colors and so on lah anything that that can takes uh, uh, categorical variable is qualitative data right so example another way, uh, uh, another example is um, uh, uh, let's say um, grade kan yeah? grade lagi kita ada satisfaction level satisfaction level waktu lagi kita ada ada banyak lah ha? nak senarikan pun banyak lah let's say salary Uh, salary group and for example so semua ni ada categorical this is male and female this is uh, uh, Malay Chinese Indian Siamese and this is we have red uh, yellow magenta uh, magenta red juga lah and like family red juga let's say uh, we have uh, green right green blue so on lah so grade a b c and so on lah right so quantitative data is a numerical i do this that chanty lah numerical data 
it takes a numerical data. A quantitative variable takes a numerical data. Numerical data means that either the data can be measured using uh, tools, right, or count data, right. So numerical data is the data can, uh, or either you take from measurement using a tool, right. For example, if you want to measure height of uh, students, so you take a tape, you measure again. So weight of uh, student, right. Uh, so you gonna nimbang again and count. You can also take from counts, right? Let's say you want to know number of accident, number of car, number of children, number of students, right? So we measure this uh, variable using count, right? So it lies under quantitative uh, variable. So under quantitative variable, it also can be divided into two uh, sub uh, data, right? So let's say either discrete discrete data or continuous data so under discrete data and continuous data continuous discrete data is a whole number continuous data consists uh, decimal point right or it it continuous right so, uh, discrete number, discrete uh, number, right, uh, is a whole number. It normally we obtain from count process lah. Count process. Uh, for continuous uh, uh, data, we usually contain, uh, obtain from uh, measurement. Right, uh, measurement. Uh, obtain the count or continuous data uh, from measurement. Uh. For example, let's say you want to measure the height of the student. Uh, very simple example. Height of the student from 0 to 170 or 180. Right? They be a range. Uh, it's, it's in in a specific range. Right? So, from 0 to infinity. Right? Right? From 0 to infinity, maksudnya apa apa range apa apa value from this range are available lah right but for whole uh, discrete random variable discrete variable or discrete uh, numbers uh, it's involve a count process so let's say it's a whole number it, it does not contain any decimal point right but any number between the range are possible but it's a whole number Let's say, for example, let's say what n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, until n lah. So, let's say p is ni. Right? So, this, uh, uh, the range is from 0 until n. But, it's a whole number. Any numbers between 0 and n are possible. But, that does not contain any uh, decimal point lah. It's a whole number. Uh, for example, a number of car, number of children, number of uh, accident, right? Uh, so it to it to based on counting process, right? So this is two type of uh, variable: qualitative variable and quantitative variable. So qualitative variable we know that is a categorical variable. So we need to highlight this one. So you need to remember. So, it's a categorical variable, right? So, for qualitative, it's a numerical data, right? So, now, under qualita uh, qualitative and quantitative variable, so, we have another uh, scale, right? And the group that we can uh, measure the scale of our uh, data, right? So, it start from, it can be divided into two, right? Uh, so, we divide this, these two parts, right? So, now, for qualitative data, right? It can be either <coughs> nominal scale and ordinal scale. So, this is uh, what we call as 
uh, scale of measurement so under qualitative and quantitative we have scale of measurement so scale of measurement for qualitative we have or nominal and ordinal for quantitative data variable so we have interval and ratio interval and ratio Right. So now under nominal and ordinal data, we know that this is lies under qualitative variable. So under qualitative variable, I tulis sini balik eh. Right. This is a quantitative. Right. So nak, nak scroll ke atas ni susah kan. Uh, so nampak kat sini right. So qualitative variable is a uh, Categorical variable, right? Categorical data, right? It takes uh, data with the categorical value, right? So both nominal and ordinal are categorical data. So what is the differentiation between uh, nominal and ordinal? Ordinal is a categorical data. That cannot be rank cannot be rank right you cannot rank the data you cannot rank the data for example uh apa example yang kita boleh letak so, i need to have another color Let's see this one so gender gender is a nominal scale because we have male and Female. We cannot say male is number one, female is number two. You cannot also say female is number one, male is number two, right? It's not. It cannot be rank, right? Another one is ethnicity, right? We can have Malay, Chinese, Indian, right? So it can be either Indian, Chinese, Malay, or Chinese, Malay, Indian, right? and so on, right? Cannot be ranked, right? It's a unrankable a categorical data, right? So it's a nominal uh, scale. For ordinal scale, a categorical data that can be ranked. Right? It should be in order. Uh, it should be in order. Should be in order. What is the example? The categorical variable should be in order. Let's say committee. Committee member. Committee member. We have president. Vice president. Secretary. Treasurer. You cannot say sim you cannot simply say that the first one is the treasurer, second is a vice president, and then president and treasurer, right? It should be in order: president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Another one is salary group. Let's say from uh, one thousand to two thousand, two thousand one to. 3,000, 3,001 to 4,000, and more than 4,000, no, more than 4,000, for example. Right, you cannot simply say the more than 4,000 should be number one, right? It should be in order, right? Nampak tak? It should be in flow, 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 3,000, and so on, right? It should be in order. So this is what we call ordinal scale of data. Right. Another one is uh, satisfaction. 
satisfied very satisfied satisfied neutral uh, dissatisfied and very satis dissatisfied so it should be in order right so this is about a qualitative uh, variable another one is we have a scale under quantitative variable so scale under quantitative variable we have two scale which is interval and ratio right we know that the quantitative data quantitative scale is a numerical scales a numerical uh, numerical uh, data right so it takes a numerical value inside the data both interval and ratio also takes a numerical value right so what is the difference between numeric interval and ratio interval where uh, is uh, zero value is not a true zero zero value is not a true zero so what does it mean it means that the true zero a zero is not a true zero lah maksudnya zero will interpret to the something else for example temperature right so 100 celsius it means that boiling boiling punya temperature kan so zero celsius does it mean no temperature at all right it means that takkan beku kan itu sudah kalau ni beku kan so so it means zero here is not a true zero right it means something else where for ratio zero value is true zero what does it mean it means that zero is a zero for example uh, money if you say that you have rm100 it means that in reality you have 100 ringgit in your pocket right so it says that you have rm0 you don't have money so it means that you don't have money it doesn't mean that you you have one ringgit but you say you don't have money right? unless you lie lah you don't you tak bagi kawan pinjam kan so you kata you tak ada duit right so means that ratio dekat sini adalah zero dia betul-betul zero means kilometer so from uh, uh, negative uh, so kilometer can be negative uh, zero to 100 so zero adalah starting point lah right okay so i hope you understand so the term uh, that we introduced today is uh, variable we have two type of variable qualitative and quantitative uh, for quantitative we have discrete and continuous and the uh, qualitative and quantitative we have level of measurement means uh, scale of measurement so we have nominal interval uh, sorry nominal ordinal interval and ratio so level of um, uh, information right level of information let's say i tak cantik pula so i tarik dia ke sini ke sini right ke sini okay so this is a level of information eh? level of information pen ni tak cantik eh level of information uh, level of information no s here right so this is a less information this is more information so nominal scale have a uh, less information when we move towards to ordinal is more than uh, information is quite more than uh, nominal interval and ratio is having a highest information right 
so this is about uh, level of information okay so let's move to the next topic so this one I dah I dah cerita dah level ordinal interval ratio let talk on you boleh tengok lah so now let's look at the exercise 1 exercise 1 Can you copy this one? Sementara nak tapak buku, copy this one dulu. So, nampak eh? Macam mana nak bagi terus sikit saja. Okay. Can you copy and answer the question? Now let's look at uh, data collection method. Uh, for sampling method, we we reserve for the next class lah. Sampling method, and then after sampling method, we we should finish our chapter number one, right? So sampling method chapter uh, super panjang ah, and I explain very long. So we reserve this sampling method uh, on the next class. Right, sebab dia akan panjang So, I tak uh, I nak you Before I explain on sampling method You need to read on sampling method first Right, so I want you to have some idea On what is sampling method I tak nak macam ni You you to, baru nak tahu Oh, this is a, the, 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 the definition This is the definition So, quite late eh? So, tak, you tak ada soalan nak tanya dekat I I want you to read And have some question to ask me. If you don't understand, must ask me in class. So, your task here today, ada satu jam lagi, lepas ni, uh, you pergi library, pinjam buku. This is a compulsory. Pinjam buku teks. Apa-apa buku, uh, introduction to statistics, fundamental statistics, any, any, any books that have uh, chapter number one explaining about the term of statistics and sampling techniques and so on. Eh? Right? So, this is your task for today. Another half hour, uh, one hour, you need to read what is sampling techniques. Next class, we have a discussion on sampling techniques. Or oh, next class, so I ulang balik, eh? Untuk, uh, data collection method and sampling techniques. Right? Next class, I want leader to assign to each group. So instead of I giving a lecture next class, uh, this is a force you to read lah, and to understand the topic. So you, instead of I am giving you a lecture, you should give me a lecture. So class leader will assign to a group. Uh, group number one will present saya ulang sekali lagi in proper way will present simple random sampling and quota sam uh, uh, convenient sampling method will present simple random sampling and convenient sampling method group number 2 will present systematic sampling techniques and judgmental sampling techniques group number 3 will present cluster and multi stage and snowball sampling techniques and group number four will present stratified sampling techniques and quarter sampling techniques. Right? Group number five will present data collection method. So this is your task for next class. Next class on Friday, uh, Wednesday. Right? Wednesday, group B, uh, you are group A, kan? Group A, pukul 2 petang. Group B, Pagi, pukul 2, uh, 8 pagi. Right? Uh, okay. So, group B tak ada kat sini kan? Uh, group B nanti petang nanti dia akan masuk. Right? So, that is, uh, that will conclude our chapter number 1. For next week, kita akan masuk descriptive statistics. Right? So, that is your task. Uh, please uh, utilize this another 1 hour ni untuk buat ke... Uh, literature search lah. Uh, sorry, baca buku on the topics. Okay. 
Any questions so far? No, sir. Dah berapa dengar? No, sir. Yes or no? I tak dengar. No, no. Alright. So, if you don't have questions, so now we, we should end our session lah. Huh? Okay. I think that's all. Thank you very much.